In this section, we'll explain in greater detail the two main categories of starting primitives for subdivisions, as well as move into a little practical example that makes use of the flat primitives to create previously difficult to achieve tent structures. Go ahead and open a new blank document from File, New, not from a template. Then go to File, Document Settings, Units, and set the units to meters so that we're both working in the same measurements. Now, double click on the Edit Subdivision tool in the 3D Modeling tool set and take a look at the various options available at the top. The first half of the primitives lists are 3D solids. The second half are also 3D objects but are flat or planar. It doesn't actually matter what object you start with, you can get to any end shape from any of these starting primitives. However, choosing an appropriate primitive to start with can save you a lot of time manually modifying the object later. For instance, the first object we're going to make is a circus-like tent roof. This object is very much a 3D shape, but it isn't solid. It's just stretched cloth. So we'll be starting with one of the flat primitives. Choose a circle primitive to begin with. We'll keep this example relatively small. Enter a value of 8 meters for the diameter and click OK. Then place the subdivision in the middle of the drawing area. Likely it will be much larger than your current view, so zoom out a bit until you can see the entire object like so. We want to create a pointed top, sloping sides to the roof, and then a bowed inward sloping sides hanging to the ground. The cables, stakes, and posts could simply be done with extrudes without using subdivisions at all, but the cloth of the tent itself is what we're going to focus on here. Back to our circle. We know we need a central peak to our top, but there's no central vertex. We'll create one by selecting the last mode of the Edit Subdivisions tool, Split Edge. Place your cursor over the bottom or top center of the subdivision like so, and click once. You'll see the red highlighting line appear across the center of the circle. Click again to create the division. However, this one split gave us more vertices, but not one in the center. To get a central vertex, we'll need to split across left to right as well as top to bottom. So hover over the left or right of the center of the subdivision, and then click. Line up the red highlighting so that the center appears to cross right in the middle, and then click again. There. Now we have our central point to create the tent's peaked top. The two extra edges we added gave us the more rectangular shape we were looking for. But we want more of a rounded rectangle. So let's stretch this shape out to the left and right a bit. Rather than grabbing and moving each face or edge individually, we can reshape groups of them together. Select the first editing mode, Transform. Then, click and drag a marquee around the left six vertices. They will then highlight in red, and the 3D dragger will appear. Click on the red linear handle. It'll turn yellow. Move the mouse slightly to the left. You'll see the floating data bar appear and show us how far we've moved. However, we want to move exactly four meters to the left. So go ahead and hit tab, then enter negative four meters. Press enter, and then click once without moving the mouse to move those selected vertices 4 meters to their left. We'll then do the same to the 6 vertices on the right, selecting them with a marquee, then clicking the red linear handle, but this time moving to the right and entering a value of 4 meters, not negative 4 meters, to move these vertices to the right the same distance. Now select the top 6 vertices as shown and move them upwards 2 meters using the same method we did for the left and right sides. And finally, select the bottom six and move them down negative two meters as well. That will give us our overall shape for the tent. Now we can raise the center. Select all but the exterior vertices as shown. Then, before we move anything, change to a front view via View, Standard Views, Front. Click on the blue linear control handle, then move it upwards five meters. Our tent is already starting to take shape, but we also want a peak in the center. However, if you're seeing this view has a bit of a perspective to it, as you can see I do here, go to View, Projection, and change this to Orthogonal. You'll see why in just a moment. Change to a right isometric view from the View menu drop-down. Then select just the top center vertex and move it upwards an additional 2 meters. Now you'll notice that our cage looks much closer to the desired profile than our actual object does at the moment. It's currently a rounded loaf shape. This is because by default, edge and vertex creasing is disabled, but we can fix that easily. Before we do, however, now that we're working with a more complex object, let's switch over to View, Rendering, OpenGL. 
Then, with the subdivision selected, give it a darker solid fill to make a surface a little easier to see. A light gray will work fine, but you can choose any color you like. Return to a front view via the view menu, then activate the crease mode of the edit subdivision tool and click on the top center vertex. Now switch back to an isometric view, right isometric is fine, and then click on each of the top outer corners of our tent. A little better, but our corners are still a bit too extreme for what we want. This is because we only creased each corner on its own, but not the top edges. We can go ahead and do that now. Click on all eight of the top edges of our tent with the edit subdivision tool in crease mode. Much closer. Now notice if you wanted slightly different corner style, such as a rounded corner, you could click again on each of the top four corners to disable creasing on those and see how that looks instead. But we'll leave this flat and rectangular for the moment. Note how the bottom corners are still uncreased and rounded, however. Click each of these bottom exterior corners with the crease mode as well to sharpen them up. If you've ever tried to model something similar in Vectorworks before, you can already start to see how much faster this method is for shapes like this. Let's continue. Return to a front view, then activate the edge split mode again. We're going to add a few more vertices to give us even more control over the tent's shape. Add two more splits along the side of the tent body, one near the top and one near the center. We want a little more inward bowing of the sides, so in the front view still, marquee select the left center vertices and move them to the right 0.5 meters. Do the same with the ones on the right side, but move them negative 0.5 meters. Then change to a left view and bring in the front and rear centers the same way. Marquee selection and move 0.5 or negative 0.5, depending on which side you're moving, to bring them inwards toward the center of the shape. We want a little more bowing to the top peak as well. So again, marquee select the top left edge of the vertices and move them inward 2 meters. Doing the same to the opposite vertices, moving them in negative 2 meters. Back to a front view and do the same to the left and right sides as we just did to the front and back. Again, using 2 meters and negative 2 meters to bring the cage inward. In the next section, we'll refine the shape further and bring in a few more details.